plastic. I need more plastic. What do we got here? We got a little ABS. Some nice PLA. Ooh. And some polycarbonate. I like this. Welcome back to the Ultimate Automation Challenge. And if you haven't guessed, today's theme is going to be some plastic production. As you can see, I have now sort of completed my plastic process, uh, petroleum processing plant that I'll hopefully get up and running in this episode here. I've got this pipe running a long ways down, and I'll actually put a wire down there and get this thing up and running. And then we're going to pump some crude oil, and we're going to refine that into petroleum. And once we get some petroleum, I'll be able to kind of store that into a tank and run it into a couple different places. But a lot of that's going to happen over here on the left in this nice, cold biome I have. Ooh, and we get the thermal nullifier up here. <laughs> We have a thermal nullifier up here, and I'm going to make good use of that to keep this entire area nice and cool. I doubt I'll get to it in this episode, but we will use some of that material or that petroleum that comes out of this oil refinery to start liquid cooling, you know, that production facility, different equipment like this and different spots inside my base. It'll all be real good. So all of this is probably going to play out over the next three or four episodes or so because it's going to take a little while to get all of this stuff set up however by the time i'm done with it what i should hopefully have is a mountain of plastic and with that mountain of plastic i'll be able to do transit tubes and really get these duplicates flying all over my base i've kept a lot of space here for me a lot of space <laughs> maybe not a lot but in breath car terms this is a lot of space and now that i have that space i'll be able to kind of teleport those duplicates around. So that'll be pretty cool. Did I mention I like plastic? I'm actually printing right now with some uh, Alloy 910 nylon. Mm, that stuff is so sweet. Let me check it out. Like this is some support material, but look, you can just like, even on the thin stuff, you can just like flex it all over the place. It doesn't break. Just like nothing. You try to rip it along the spot, on, along the grain, you can't. Just, you just can't. Super tough stuff. Love it. Plastic's amazing. All right. So let's just continue this stuff up on over here. We'll get that up and running. You guys were mentioning over here, several of you, that my skimmer pipes, whoops. There we go. Hold on. <clears throat> my skimmer is actually backwards. So I can correct that. The other thing is that there are, is a fixed temperature that is coming out of this. We talked about that a little bit. I guess there's a fixed temperature that's also coming out of these guys as well. Yes, at 40 degrees Celsius. So here's kind of the problem that I have right now, now that I've actually thought about that, is that even though the liquid is coming into the system at a relatively lower temperature, hmm, a lot of these pipes are not insulated. So that's where a lot of my heat is coming from. I was really thinking that, you know, there's not a lot going on in here. Where's the heat coming from? It's radiating from these pipes. That's where it's coming from. So I tell you what, let's run a little experiment here. And I'm going to try to put insulated liquid pipes over the top of these. I should be able to, I should be able to just build over the top of it without creating a mess. We'll set that to like a nice high priority. Insulated abyss light. That ought to do it. Ooh, look, I got two sage hatches down here. Plastic ladders. Oh, yeah. Everywhere. You know it. Yeah, I can just upgrade right over the same pipes without causing a flood. So what I saw previously is that, that if I use an insulated pipe, it seems to work out just fine. Here's what I'm going to try to do to try to just knock s some of this stuff out of here. Is I'll upgrade, but I'm, I'm going to use granite. I don't think I got to go straight to abyss light. There was a previous experiment that I had done that makes that makes me feel like that's actually going to work out and work out just fine. Of course, that experiment was done before this current update. Hang on, we're too many pipes. You guys were also talking about how I don't necessarily need to do that. You know what? I like to do that. It lets me know that I've connected them all. Sometimes you just do things because you like doing it that way. Not necessarily that it's necessary, you just like to do it that way. All right, is this made of, uh... no, that's made of abyss light. All right, there we go. Did I forget anything? <laughs> yes, I did. Okay, there we go. 
That'll be a small task. Sure, let's start this episode off by doing something we weren't planning to do at all. Rebuild all the pipes in your base. Good start, Brodkar. Way to stay on task. Uh, you're welcome. Yep, you're welcome. All right, so let's deconstruct some liquid pipes here or whatever and just get this thing flipped around. <clears throat> so what this needs to do is go in this side and then come out that way and jump over. Got it. You guys got a keen eye. There we go. Let's just get that done. All right, so we were talking about just closing this, going back to auto, and then setting both sides to a maximum of eight. So I think that's going to be a good idea. Not 456,997. Wow, how'd that happen? I'm just gonna go with eight. You know, here's another thing I'm going to do. Bring this over here, right there, and then just connect it just like this, and then I'll put a liquid valve inside of here. That'll allow me to control what's flowing in there. And I can just kind of deliver water into this area right there for the for cooking. Now I know this is already going to be germ free because it's, no, it's not. Wrong spot. Don't connect. Cancel. <clears throat> Take two. This is where we want it to go to. See, clearly, right? Because my plumbing system is about as clear as mud. Bam. Yeah, maybe, maybe something like that. Perfect, like a dream come true. Bunch of really happy hatches. That's good. I've started to feed them other stuff at the moment, just to kind of, uh, I don't know, maybe get some different hatches in here. Don't get me wrong, the sages are amazing, but the material that's available as far as, you know, sending the rocks over there, it's way down here, so I don't really, I don't wanna deliver all of that over there right now. Okay, so here's what I should do. I should really put sages on one side and normal hatches on the other. That way I can feed them accordingly. All right, so there we go. We'll put sages on the left and just normal hatches on the right. Slightly organize this. So we'll, they want to eat some polluted dirt. So I should be able to ship some of this that I have down here. So if I load it and then convey it, see how I'm not focusing on what I was talking about at all? Yeah, doing real good. So expensive. So if I bring polluted dirt up there, I will also get a little bit of polluted oxygen. So what I want to do is use a deodorizer. So I should also bring sand up there as well. So the amount of progress I've made on getting down to some oil, not much. <laughs> okay, unfortunately I can't find the comment here, but there was some comments that you guys were talking about as far as me not having the exact same layout as what you guys have when you actually start the game now. So after the update, there must have been some sort of change to the game or something like that because some geysers I don't have as far as that being right here. Um, now I do know that I at least have this one down here, an oil reservoir. Uh, so I got that. And there's probably a geyser around somewhere even though I haven't been able to uncover one. So I'm kind of debating whether or not I really want to bring in a geyser that should be there currently as the game is, or if I just keep looking around. If I look around and I simply don't find any sort of geysers, then I might do that, because I think there was going to be a slush geyser over there, which would be very, very handy and also kind of interesting. As we can see, there's nothing that I have quite yet. There might also be some buildings that's not there for me that would be up there near space, which I think I might do a little bit of a copy paste once I get that far. We'll have to, uh, we'll just have to see what happens here. I'm not gonna get to that stuff anytime soon, but ooh, what do we got here? Tropical Pachu converts algae into polluted dirt. Mm, I gotta get in this fish game. Looks like most of the pipes here have been converted to insulated, so that's good. So hopefully I'll see the temperature start to drop a little bit. Not that there's really anything around here that's really going to be cooling it. I suppose one thing I could do, and we have talked about it, is use this hydrogen cooling loop, <laughs> since I have so much extra hydrogen now, and just do something with it. I'll put a little T in here, just around this area where I'm, I'm producing a lot of oxygen. So as I produce some oxygen, it should, you know, at least produce it at a very a, a cooler temperature. And we'll see what happens. You know, if this cools the base a lot, or if it doesn't really at all. I would think that this should have a pretty decent effect on the uh, overall temperature of my base. 
although it might be a little bit too dramatic. Again, let's queue up another thing that doesn't involve plastic. We'll do anything, but let's just do anything but actual plastic production. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's the wrong. S nope. That's right. Oh, hang on. Yeah. Oh, I get it. Oh, that's what's up. I forgot to disable this bottle. I was wondering where like all of my water was going. It's going right here. The extra liquidy liquid lock. Plenty of water. That'll be all good. Yeah, see that was causing some problems because I wasn't getting enough water to keep that stuff running. Good job, duplicates. Let's pick it up out of the pitcher pump and put it right back in the bottle emptier. Way to be efficient. It is cute for auto bottling. Yeah, I guess that's... I've converted Max into an exosuit engineer so we can go and deliver and just kind of operate a little bit faster here. I don't really need these pinch pepper plants now. Now that I have a different way to get rid of some of my extra water over here. And remember that everything that's coming out of this sieve here is germ free because it's already run through the terrariums. Everything above it is packed full of germs. So that's important to remember because the water down here is germ free. So long as nobody has a problem and then they, you know, and then you got to sweep it up and then you got to have to empty it up into this bottle emptier so that it gets purified. Yes, the super long power cable has finally been built. Run, pump. You can, uh, you're out of power. Darn it. It ends there. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to put a power shut off right there. Yes. I'm going to connect to that through that. Perfect. And then we'll do this number here. And then with the plumbing, as it's going in, I'm going to build up a little bit of a batch so I can have, you know, I don't have to fill this entire pipe. Why? Because, because automation. That's why. And then over here, I'm just going to put a nice small battery. So there's going to be a little bit of residual charge, but and that that's built up. And therefore it'll just pump for a little while after that. I'm not exactly sure what the whole plan of all that is, or at least what its practical application is. I'll have to observe later if it actually has any really, you know, if it makes any, if it's useful at all. I guess my thinking here is that I don't want to draw this battery down too much by just running this pump constantly. So as long as I have some liquid in the pipe, then I'm good to go and I don't have to add more to it. Hang on, why are you so hungry, Gossman? Food not permitted. Oh, what kind of consumables do we have? Anybody can have an omelet. How about that? Do I got any eggs to crack? Nothing. Not actually hungry. False alarm. That's all. Just a hard worker. So I've decided to feed these hatches over here on the right sandstone. And it looks like I'm starting to build into stone hatchling eggs, which is which would be really useful. So if we take a look at stone hatchlings. Okay, we'll just go to critters, hatch. What they do is convert a lot of this rock into coal. And I think that's going to be better than my sage hatches, which are converting a lot of things like dirt or slime, which I would like to feed them, um, but polluted dirt and things like that. You know what? I can actually put slime up there, but then, then it's going to be germy. Crap. They would be really useful for slime. There's plenty of things I don't want them to eat now, now that we can make good use of polluted dirt. So yeah, I think I'm gonna rock more stone hatchlings than sage hatchlings, because they're gonna just eat the dirt. It's gonna mess me up. Well, I'm not feeding them dirt right now, just polluted dirt, which is still dirt. But down here, that's just fine. I mean, you see, we've got clay. They can actually eat clay, I think. Nope, I'm wrong on that one. They cannot eat clay. All they want to do is eat really good stuff. Man, I'm not a big fan of sage hatches all of a sudden. I think I might just turn these sage eggs into mm, delicious omelets. Get out of here, sage hatches. Ooh, look at that. Pipe, excellent. So it pumped up and then the automation signal. Ah, what was it doing? That needs to be, is crude oil there? Yes, then that is open. So let's talk about the fluids again, why we might use something besides crude oil to do liquid cooling inside my base. So taking a look at crude oil, what we can see is that it will freeze at negative 40 degrees Celsius, which is very low and very, very useful. And it has a specific heat capacity of 1.69. Petroleum, however, 
has a freezing point of negative 57 degrees Celsius and a little bit higher specific heat capacity of 1.76. So it's not a huge difference. However, petroleum would do a little bit better job of cooling my base. However, I do have to run it through this system here in order to get it. So there may be some areas where I'm just doing crude oil and then some other areas where I'm doing petroleum, I'm just kind of mixing them around just to, I don't know, have fun with it. All right, so I'm starting to have a little bit of a problem with oxygen. So I'm just gonna open this up and let it flow out a little bit. But I've also re-enabled this system here to dump power into the rest of the grid so that I start burning up more hydrogen. I was kind of restricting it so a lot of that hydrogen would find its way into the loop. And now you can see I've ran out of room. <laughs> so I can run more hydrogen generators. That's one thing. So I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'll put in a second hydrogen generator here. And rather than fill this loop up even more, oh buddy, I'm going to pipe that over here. It didn't take long for this to turn into spaghetti. Oh, wait a minute. I can do that. There. That's even better. That way I can leave that off and just build this, which will add power to the grid. Ooh, ooh, and we can get fancy with it too because it's the ultimate automation challenge. Remember this here, we now have an automation signal that runs off this exact same thing, just like that. At some point here, I will get into the whole power system and actually make a real power plant or multiple power plants. Probably multiple power plants throughout the base, but they'll be managed by one central power system, you know, method of distribution. Still too much hydrogen. So I'm working on a tank for all of my petroleum. That'll be over here. And then we'll be able to use that up. Try to crank up the priority on this stuff and get her done. Come on now. One more piece. One more piece here as well. Let's take out one of these sage hatches inside of here. I don't need all of them. And we'll try to turn it into some barbecue. Nope. It's old though. Look, its age is a hundred. It's just waiting to be eaten. That's all it has left to give food, nutrients, priorities. Um, combat, super combat, three into combat. Come on, boom. So there we go, 3,200 calories. Meat, 3,200 calories, come on. Is Nicola just gonna eat it? What a punk, you didn't even cook it up. I know, I could have set that in a way that they would have, but. I still have too much hydrogen. Go, run. There you go. I gotta use up more power. Is that it? This base is almost like annoyingly efficient on power. Considering how automated it is. I mean, it's like, what are my reports? What am I using day by day? 203 kilojoules? Really? That's it? Just 200? 159? You know what that means? We gotta start refining some oil. Hey now, why isn't this running? Because we're out of iron ore. Okay. Uh-oh. Bubbles got stuck. It's mm. okay. You can dig out. There you go. Yeah. Oxygen is back under control. And that piece is still not built. Maybe it's just for whatever reason. Ooh, there we go. Stone hatchling egg. Perfect. And for whatever reason, stone hatch is not here. Well, maybe that's because I don't have one yet. That must be it. <laughs> oh yeah. Get some of that, Gossman. Look at this, look at this. Sweet, sweet petroleum. Why am I building a giant tank of petroleum? You know, why not? What I should be doing is making some plastic. Actually, I should probably be making some power. Actually, I should be capping this off so that you can get in there without crazing, making a big, mess. Okay. Yep. So now that that is settled, deconstruct that. Yeah. Liquid. I don't have any yet. This is auto. Okay. You know what? Instead of running the system over here on the right with this hydrogen generator, I should really run the system on the left, you know, with the spare hydrogen I have from the ultimately coming from the metal refinery. <laughs> uh, obviously, I could also just run a petroleum generator. Now that consumes 2,000 grams a second. It wouldn't be a bad thing. 
but what am I gonna do with the natural gas? You know what? There is room for that right here. Okay, let's redesign. Ooh, we can see this loop is now running. And let's see what the temperature looks like. Ooh, hey, that's nice and cool in there. We'll have to see how this plays out over several cycles. Bubbles, are you serious right now? Oh, man. So, I reworked the pipe system a little bit here so that, again, a radiant pipe will be over the generator. And you know what? These should really be an airflow tile. That way, carbon dioxide just falls down, down and to the right. All right, here's what I'll do. Liquid comes in this way, and this will be used for petroleum. So I can cancel that. But now all I have to do is figure out how to get a pipe down to this. So, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that right here. Ha! Take that. Let's see if I can get this thing up and running by the end of this episode. So if we take a look at the temperature, yeah, that's looking pretty good. 30 degrees Celsius right there. Not bad. There's definitely some spots that are warm, but we've made a big dent. All right, so I'm going to re-enable this. Bingo. So now, um, depending on what this automation signal is, if we're above 20, we'll make this lower. We'll just make that five. So now this should run. And what I'm going to get out of it is some petroleum. And that petroleum is going to go on over here to the right. And then this thing can work depending on the automation signal, right? So you can see that it has pumped a lot of liquid down here. And that's going to be above, let's say, just 20 kilograms for now so we can see it cycle. I should probably change this manual airlock over to a mechanical airlock. And you know what? I can even plug it in because why not be fancy, huh? Wait a minute. Where's this one going? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> So this petroleum generator refills that battery in a, in a hurry. And it's got nothing else to run, so it just kind of sits there. I suppose what I could do is change up the automation for this over here and detect whether or not there's hydrogen over here. And therefore, if that is true, then I run the hydrogen generator and disable the coal generator. If it's not true, I enable the coal, disable the hydrogen. Many things I could do. So long as we can run enough this refinery enough to keep getting refined metals out of it. All of that should be possible. Oh no, I've got too much polluted water. No? Because I've got no, I'm good. The madness of everything! Oop. So we are above a certain pressure. Yes, gaseous. Natural gas. Nope, not there yet. It's gonna take a ton of pressure to get there. Look at this thing cool! Look at that! It's working out pretty good. I could probably just do that in a couple more spots and... Oh, you know what I'm going to use all of this power for? Yeah, we gotta get into that. Let's take a look at what does it... What does it take to make plastic? Ooh, a polymer press. Luckily, that isn't refined metal, so that's really easy to make. And where to make that? I could put it right over here in the cold biome. So it's already nice and cold. That would probably be a good idea. I tell you what, just to get things rolling, I'll stick one right there. Ooh, this thing is almost running. I saw it. It clicked over for just a minute. There it is. The pressure's there. The gas is... Ooh, it's getting close. I should convert these to gas tiles so that carbon dioxide finds its way over there. Nah, just that one. And this filled up to the max. Anyhow, I'm so glad I went through all of this. Whatever. Still there. Deal with it. See how quickly this drains down and then all of a sudden, this thing's a beast. Yes. Oh, 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 I saw that run for a bit. What's the temperature like in here? It's toasty. Oh, but the temperature's dropping. Just a, like a, a little bit, a little bit. I suppose this stuff could be made into a radiant pipe as well because it's should be nice low temperature. <laughs> See now, if I can only figure out where to put a power station inside of this, I might have actually crammed everything possible into one room. <laughs> oh wait, we forgot something. There's polluted oxygen inside of here, so a little bit of deodorizer. So that can go there. No wait, hang on, that's gotta be a mesh tile. We don't want anything sticking to it. 
little mesh tile there. And then on top of that, a deodorizer. Now we've got all the bases covered, except for I can't automatically load this deodorizer. Ooh, hang on. Nope, there's a net gain of water that's happening here. Uh, so if that's backed up, I need to be able to pipe the excess liquid out of here. Even more complicated. <laughs> oh, wow, okay. Well, you know what? I think I've made some excellent progress today. Watch this, it's gonna run again. So actually, this should be a little bit lower. Let's, let's go ahead and just, if it's above 600, you'll find a balancing point here. What about the temperature? Ooh, that one's so hot. We're gonna need a Wolframite thermal shift plate just to kind of uh, help that radiate a little bit. Oh, and here we go. <laughs> All right, so I'm coming up on cycle 200. And you know what? This system over here on the left is up and running and that's looking pretty good. So I'll probably get into a little bit of plastic production in the next episode here. I think I made a lot of good progress today. You know, not bad. Came up with a couple solutions to get some water out of my liquid system. Also came up with another way to kind of cool down my base a little bit here before it got too hot. There are definitely some areas over here that are still quite warm, mostly because, you know, the, the cooler areas here are only gonna really cool downward. But I also have a lot more petroleum that's now available and crude oil that I can use to maybe even tap into the thermal nullifier and start to get that piping around and really cooling some of this, you know, different places inside my base. I'm looking forward to that. That'll be a lot of fun, but that'll have to happen here in the next couple of episodes. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this little episode here of Oxygen Not Included, the ultimate automation challenge. If I've earned your subscription, then thank you so much for that. Stay awesome, guys. Peace. Brothgar.